Hello, all. Today we're going to continue with relativity, and we talked about general relativity last time, but what we're going to do this time is start with what is called special relativity, or the special theory of relativity, Einstein's 1905 idea that uh, is pretty amazing, and we'll talk about that, and we'll get back to general relativity and some other things, too. So let's talk about the special theory of relativity. That's different. Now remember general relativity was that mass warp space and time. Special relativity is this. The idea is one thing, that the speed of light is a constant for all observers. Now what that means is this. Kind of like if, if you are driving in a car and you have a sunroof and you, let's say you're driving at 50 miles an hour and you pop a, uh, have someone go out of the sunroof, not totally out, but stick their head out, their arm, and throw a baseball at 50 miles an hour in front of you. So imagine this, you're driving 50 miles an hour. Someone throws a baseball at 50 miles an hour. Doesn't that speed add up? So the baseball relative to the ground would be going 100 miles an hour. Well, with light, it doesn't work that way. If you're going, let's say, half the speed of light in a spaceship, and were it to shine a beam of light in front of you, it would not be going one and a half times the speed of light. It would always be going the speed of light. So for all observers, light always goes the speed of light. So it's kind of different than what we're used to. Well, that's one thing. Also, take a look at this. High velocities, which are called relativistic velocities, can result in length contraction and time dilation. Now, this gets a little peculiar. We're gonna, I'm gonna talk about this. And which means, it means this, the faster you go, the more time slows down for you, which means the faster you go, what happens is the distances between two points get actual less. If you are going incredibly fast in space, distances between stars for you is actually, they're, they're less. It's not just that you get somewhere quicker, which is true, the faster you go, but the faster you go, the actual distance between any two points from your measurements, from, the way, from what you're doing, is actually less than someone who's not going that fast. The distances are actually different for, for you compared to someone who's not traveling fast. Well, just to talk about this, uh, the slide, I thought I'd gotten rid of the slide. This is a little pe peculiar, but something called the twin paradox. What happens is this, now imagine this. Imagine you have a twin sister and you're both 20. Your twin sister decides to go to the star Sirius, which is nine light years away, and come back. Well, really nothing can go with the speed of light. So, but you can go fast. I mean, only light goes the speed of light. Anything with mass cannot go the speed of light. According to relativity, the, the, if you have any mass whatsoever, the closer you get to the speed of light, the more mass you, get, uh, you have, you actually gain mass. And anything with any mass whatsoever if it's going to speed of light, it would have infinite mass, which does not make any sense. So if you have any mass at all, you can go 99% of the speed of light, you'll be get, getting a lot more massive, but that's, at least that's not breaking any rules of, of laws of physics, rules of relativity. Let's say I had a twin sister then, you're both 20. Your sister decides to go to the star Sirius, nine light years away at 99% of the speed of light. Very close to the speed of light, but not quite. So your sister heads off, and remember, you're both 20, you're twins, same age. Now, your sister, from her point of view, because she's traveling so fast, the distance to Sirius is not going to be nine light years for her. It's much less. She gets to Sirius in about three months. She doesn't really like it there. It's just a star. I mean, she just observes it. She comes right back. It takes her three months to come back. Six months will have passed for her but about 20 years will have passed for you. You will be 40 years old when she gets back. And she will be still 20, about 20 years, maybe six months. So so sorry, I'm getting another call here. So it's, uh, I'm not even sure if this is recording. Um, I hope it is, you might be hearing beeps. So again, so again, uh, what happens, your sister going very close to the speed of light will come back and be only maybe six months older 
and you'll be 20 years older. So this is the twin paradox. It's called the twin paradox. It gets even more weird than that. <clears throat> what happens if your sister were to go the speed of light, she would get to the star Sirius and come back with no time passing. Get 18 years will have passed for you. So you'd be 38 and she would come back instantly, which is very strange. That's not the twin paradox, but that's just uh, we're extrapolating from the twin paradox. It gets even more weird than that. If your sister goes faster than the speed of light, what happens is the distance between two points gets inversed. So she actually gets back before she left. Negative time passes. She will come back. And not only will she be, well, what we'll find is not just you waiting for her, she will find her waiting for her. So that's a form of time travel. If you can go fast and light, you can be traveling fast. You can be, you can be going back in time. So let's talk a little bit about time travel. And it gets pretty weird here. Some things that could happen, you may meet yourself or a relative and affect the timeline of events. You don't have to write this down. Well, yeah, if you meet yourself, you see how there could be problems. You may do now. What if you accidentally, what if you accidentally meet, like, well, let's say you meet your great, great, great grandfather, accidentally kill him because you went back in time. You see a problem with that? You accidentally kill him. Let's say then you have no great, great, great grandfather. Then you weren't even born. And if you weren't born, how would you go back in time to affect that? You see, there are problems. And look, number two here, it says you may do something that isn't recommended. Well, you would think that just going back and accidentally killing your great, great, great grandfather isn't recommended. But there are things, more things, worse things you can do. And I'm going to mention them. Now, certain movies, and all these movies, you know, I'll give you an extra point if you watch. You have a lot of time now. Well, maybe not, but you have more, probably more time to sit at home than you did before. Back to the Future, the Marty, I mean the first one. First one, I'll give you a point for it. Uh, you should have seen it anyway, but I'm finding out a lot of people haven't seen it. Back to the Future. Marty goes back in time, and at one point, even in the first movie, he meets himself. Now, in the second one, second Back to the Future, he meets himself and his, you know, a lot of different relatives. But in the first one, at least he meets himself. I guess he meets his parents back in time. But uh, that's a good, great time travel movie, Back to the Future. Superman, the 1978 version. When Lois dies, what does he do? He goes back in time by actually traveling faster than light. No, who knows if there are different ways to go back in time. In reality, it, time travel is probably not even possible. But there are different, in, the, in one of the ways we've just talked about, if you go fast and light, you can go back in time. And that's what Superman does. So I'll give you an extra point for this one. It's a little dated, but at least uh, Bex Le Lex Luthor Gene Hackman is in this one. Uh, and so uh, at least you get to see uh, Gene Hackman. He, he, he's great. So uh, the movie, I like the movie as a kid. It's not quite as good as when you're older, but there's Superman, the original. Now, what about this? The butterfly effect. Now, the butterfly effect, a pretty good timeline movie. It's about altering time and going on different paths on different timelines. And so that is the butterfly effect. Uh, it's a great, it's very disturbing. It's a very disturbing movie, but I recommend it. I give you a point if you watch it. And what else? Frequency, great time travel movie. Uh, actually, it's more of a communication in time movie between a father and a son. I'll give you a point for this. Dennis Quaid, uh, Jim Caviezel, uh, really good. Some disturbing parts, but good science fiction. Of course. The Terminator. Yeah, Terminator's a, a great one. First Terminator. Uh, I'll give you a point if you see it. A great time travel movie. Deja Vu. Uh, of course, Denzel Washington. I mean, he's, yeah, he's good in almost everything he does. This is a movie where you really have to think. So Deja Vu, give you a point for that. You can be busy for a while with these movies. Deja Vu, very good science fiction movie. Project Almanac, and I couldn't make it through this. I, 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 this is what, not, one of my, not one of my movies that I thought was that great, but Joe said, nah, you got to put this down as something for them to watch, so I put it down. Uh, maybe I need to try to watch it again. But Project Almanac, 
That's a, that's a good one. Uh, as far as Joe's concerned, is me and eh, not quite. Now, there's a great one I think. Source code uh, with Jake uh, Gyllenhaal or Gyllenhaal, I should say, and it, this. Yeah, this movie is uh, you can watch over and over again. It's a great it's a great time movie. Uh, Source code, very very interesting movie. It's actually very short. It's like an hour and a half. It's this movie just flies by. Great movie. Oh, here's another good one. Hot Tub Time Machine. Now, that's John Cusack. I, yeah, yeah, I love John Cusack growing up. He was in this movie. This is a funny movie. Very crude. If you don't like crude humor, don't watch this. But if you like crude humor, you should watch this. And uh, it's, it's uh, Chevy Chase is in it. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's some good stuff. Funny. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. What else? Edge of Tomorrow. Now, I'm not really a big Tom Cruise fan, but he's done some pretty good, uh, pretty good science fiction movies. But uh, this is a pretty good, this is a, a really good time travel movie. So that's another one for you, extra point, just for seeing it. Now, The Dead Zone, the original one uh, with Stephen King's story, uh, with Christopher Walken, I'll give you a point for that, 1983 movie. But this one was the early 2000s to mid-2000s, and the star of it was Anthony Michael Hall, you know, from The Breakfast Club and... 16 Candles and Weird Science. He's kind of a uh, clown kid in those movies. Well, he, he kind of became, I thought, a pretty good, pretty good actor. He really kind of branched out a little bit. But the Dead Zone series, uh, you can try that. Watch the first episode. I'll give you extra points for that. And then there's a bunch of other episodes. I'm not going to give you a ton of points for it. But if you like it, do it. Uh, I got hooked on this and watched an episode you know, for uh, six years of the seasons, watching an episode uh, at night for months and months, and then I got depressed after the, se after the series was over. I wanted more of it, and uh, there are no more. Now, here's another one. This is a good miniseries uh, with James Franco, another Stephen King uh, story, 11-22-63, and this is really good. Watch the pilot episode. And I got hooked on this one. It's a uh, it's really good time travel, really good time travel movie. Again, Stephen King. Stephen King does some really, well, Stephen King some, does some really kind of like not so good stuff, but Stephen King does some really good stuff. I mean, The Green Mile and actually Shawshank Redemption were Stephen King. And he's some of the more recent things like this one and um, Dead, Zone, Dead Zone was a really good one too. Now, Time Rider. I got to tell you about this. And... What happens in this, Fred Ward is in this movie, and Fred Ward, the same guy with Kevin Bacon and Tremors, if you, did, if you saw that. Well, in Time Rider, what happens is this is kind of a low-budget science fiction movie. Yeah, not the best, but some interesting aspects in here. I mean, Peter Coyote's in this, too, the, playing the bad guy, the, the bandit. Uh, but what happens is Fred Ward, this, this motorcycle uh, motocross rider, go, uh, is in a race in the desert, gets caught in a government experiment. Uh, and what he, he gets sent back into to 1877, into the, the West in 1877, and he's riding around there on a motorcycle, and some bandits see him and want to get that motorcycle because that thing is well, it's like way better than a horse. Unfortunately, uh, he, runs out of, he runs out of gas. He runs out of fuel for his motorcycle, and he ends up in this town where a woman kind of hides him away. He befriends the woman, and... You know, to make a story more interesting, what happens is he and the woman get pretty close. They eventually make love and kind of adds to the story. And at the end of the movie, I'm going to ruin this for you, uh, even if you do watch it. So what happens is this, where the government comes in and able to rescue him. And he, they, so they rescue him. They, they're able to take him back. And he finds out who that woman was. That woman was his great, great, great grandmother. He was his own great, 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 I think one more great, great grandfather. Remember what I said? There are things that are not recommended. That's one of them. So this th these kind of things can happen if you can travel in time, which uh, are not, again, not recommended to be your own great, great, great grandfather. Don't do it if you can help it. All right, I can say that on the air. No, no one's listening anyway. All right, uh, Minority Report. Yeah, Minority with Tom Cruise, this is a good one. Minority Report, time after time. Jack the Rip, this is another, it's a 
I wasn't, well, it's about, it's an H.G. Wells. He, he, Malcolm McDowell plays H.G. Wells in this, and Jack the Ripper gets loose and uses his time machine to wreak havoc through, you know, different times and ends up in San Francisco in the, in the 80s coming, or the 1980s after coming from like the 1880s or 1890s. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a pretty interesting movie. It's less dated, but, you know, check it out. It's a pretty good time travel movie. Jumper. Now, I don't know why I even have this in here. Somebody said it was good. I never even finished watching it. Jumper, was Jumper good? Hey. I don't know. I'm not offering an extra point for Jumper because I haven't even seen it yet. I, someone said, you got to put it in here. I said, okay, I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to see it. Then someone said, no, you got to get out of there. It's terrible. I don't know. I got to watch it to make my own decision. Oh, ne- who put this in here? Nick- I can't. Someone put this in here. Don't, I didn't even want to see Nicolas Cage. I'm starting to get queasy. I just had a couple of burritos. Don't, yeah, I, I can't stand the sight of Cage. Uh, Nicholas Cage and like Colin Farrell, don't even mention those people to me. Um, I, I actually will almost throw up. Um, Predestination, Ethan Hawke, Sarah Snook. Now this movie is very interesting. I'll tell you what here, I'm gonna give you a chance for some extra points here. And let me show you, I wonder if I can show you, um, no, I'm not gonna show you now. Uh, I'm going to show you a a preview of this, but I'm not. Watch this movie, Predestination. Write up a one-page, like, reaction. This was this movie was kind of like blew me away as far as the the time travel aspect of it uh, and what happened in it. And then if one page, your reaction, send it to your assistant. I'll give you five points, extra credit. Still part of the cap, five points for Predestination. Somewhere in Time, Christopher Reeve, Jane Seymour. Very sad movie. But uh, some interesting things in this movie. And uh, I recommend this one, too, for a point. So back to general relativity. Let's talk about general relativity. Let's talk about the first piece of evidence that mass warps space and time. It's called the Einstein effect. Now, you should read the tidbits for exam four. The, one of the tidbits chapters is about the Einstein effect. and The Einstein effect is this. In general, to remember mass warp space and time? That's the idea, that mass warp space and time. Well, what happens, what happens is this. If mass warp space and time, All right, well, I'm back here. Sorry about um, that. I had to take care of uh, something. All right. No, but, no I didn't, it wasn't that. Hey. <laughs> there, someone's calling me. No, there, there are different things happening here. Yeah, my wife's here on her computer. My stepdaughter comes in. Now someone keeps, this phone number keeps popping up. Uh, I can't get it, but it keeps, yeah, I, oh, uh, I'm going to finish the lecture, but, uh, yeah, I, I just had a, I had to deal with some things and, um, hopefully, I don't know, you're probably hearing that beep. Yeah, I'm going to just finish here. I'll go through fast. All right. Uh, Einstein effect, mass warp space and time. Here's what happens during a total solar eclipse. A star, which would have been behind the sun, was actually starlight was bent around the sun. And we wouldn't have noticed that unless we had a, uh, the moon blocking the sun. So what happened is the sun warps space and time the most in the solar system because it's the most massive. So what's going to happen is this. Light that's going to be bent, that light that's coming around near the sun is going to be bent. But we wouldn't notice that because you can't see sun and stars, the sun and the stars at the same time, unless a total solar eclipse is happening. So you should read about this in tidbits. A star was not at the same position where it should be because starlight got bent around. Look at this diagram here. Starlight going straight got bent around the, because of the warping of the space of space time. And we ended up seeing a star in a different position. It was off by 1.75 arc seconds, exactly what Einstein predicted. And we have to actually, so 
This is the first piece of evidence that mass warps space and time. We have a bunch of evidence now. I mean, here's one, the Einstein cross. These are images of the same galaxy very far away. We get multiple images of the same thing. Uh, but look at this. Here's a cluster of galaxies warping space and time, and this is called a gravitational lens. I, here's a very distant galaxy where light's going this way, it gets bent and comes to us. Light from this galaxy is going this way, it gets bent and comes to us. So what we're going to do in certain images, look at this, a cluster of galaxies. See these arcs? There's an arc there, an arc there. You see that arc of blue there, that arc of blue right here. Those might be the, the images of the same galaxy. Those are not necessarily galaxies right there. They're way behind here, but that light is getting bent because of the warping of space and time. That's general relativity. Now, effects encountered upon approach of a black hole. A couple things that are going to happen. And you know what? I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this for next time. Enough, enough stuff. And yeah, this, this, whoever this is, is going to keep calling me back, disturbing me. Uh, I'm going to end right now because this is a long enough, and I'm, and I'm kind of I'm uh, discombobulated here, and I don't want to start this recording again. I don't even know if it's even recorded. I'm going to stop it right now.